It was Emmanuel Lasker who rightly remarked that the battle on the chessboard is not conducted by white and black pieces, but by people. People who have different states of health, different tournament positions and also different moods. Who knows how my game with Yuri Anikayev would have gone had I not been in an especially aggressive mood that evening. I did not just want to win. This is almost always the case. I wanted to sacrifice. I wanted to attack. And the attack succeeded. I will not hide the fact that the finish gave me considerable pleasure and a special prize. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you that brilliant attacking game which world-class Soviet chess grandmaster Yefim Gevler played against Soviet international master Yuri Anikayev. The game was played in 1979 in Minsk at the 47th USSR Championship. In this game Gevler had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Anikayev responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3, e6 d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and d6. We see the Scheveningen variation against which what is going for the classical variation bishop e2, bishop e7, after which both players castled kingside, f4, knight c6, bishop e3, a6, a4, preventing any possible advancement on the queen side and bishop d7. Now look, there are lots of positional nuances in this line which one should take into consideration when playing. As black has already played a6 and has weakened the b6 square, choosing this idea of playing bishop d7 followed by knight takes d4 and bishop c6 is not really good because white can exploit the weakness of the dark squares by playing a5. In this case, it was better to play queen c7 with the idea of going for the exchange of knights on d4, relieving the tension in the center of the board and playing e5. Or instead of going for knight takes d4, after queen c7, black can also choose the hedgehog setup, play b6 and then bishop b7. In our game after a4, we have bishop d7 and instead of thinking about moving away his knight, and putting it on b3, Geller played bishop f3. This move is designed to emphasize the drawbacks to black's chosen move order. Now if you go for knight takes d4, then after bishop takes d4, if bishop c6, then white can play a5. Of course, you can always cover the b6 square by playing knight d7, but that's a passive and defensive approach by black. In our game after bishop f3, we see knight a5, black wants to put his knight on c4, which is a very standard square for black knight in classical Scheveningen. Queen e2, well, in here I would like to tell you how is usually white organizing his attack. White is pushing forward his g-pawn and then can play bishop g2, queen h5 and then rook f3, rook h3. This is the standard idea or can even play queen e1 and queen h4. But in our game after knight a5 we see queen e2 and queen c7 by black. In return in this line black is trying to exploit the vulnerability of the semi-open c file and also can go for a breakthrough in the center. g4 by Gedler. Well in here rook a d1 and then meeting knight c4 with bishop c1 is considered to be a solid continuation but after queen c7 we see g4. Geller is in an aggressive mood today and he is going for an aggressive attack. No solid moves. Rook c8, which is a dubious move after which black is starting to face serious problems. The thing is that this kingside rook doesn't belong to c file. Usually black is either leaving the rook on c8 from where it is overprotecting the pawn on f7 or is putting on e8 and then the bishop goes to f8, g6, bishop, g7. But in our game we have rook c8 and g5 by Keller, knight e8 and there comes f5. I have to tell you that in here instead of playing rook c8 it was better to play g6 or h6 is also playable. But we see rook c8 after which the g pawn march forward without meeting any obstacles and this time it's time for the f pawn, f5. Mm, yeah, white's attack looks very scary, right? Now if a move like e5 then 
you are surrendering the d5 square and this can be very unpleasant for black that's why to f5 black answered with knight c4 bishop h5 with this move white is creating a devastating bishop takes f7 threat for example if a move like knight takes b2 then bishop takes f7 can follow and whatever you play either king takes f7 or king h8 in both cases e takes f6 can follow that's why in our game after bishop h5 we have g6 neutralizing white's threat but here comes f takes g6 white is managing to open up the f file and all this is very scary queen f2 with the threat of penetrating the 7th rank knight e5 black is covering the f7 square but at this point knight g7 was better allowing queen f7 turns out to be not that scary because after queen f7 check king h8 white has two hanging bishops now if queen takes e7 then black can play queen d8 and now if queen takes d8 check then after rook takes d8 yeah black can win back the sacrificed piece or after queen d8 if move like rook f7 then after the exchange of queens on e7 black can capture on e3 and yeah if rook takes d7 then let's not forget that your bishop on h5 is also hanging or black can even play e5 and only then win back the sacrificed piece but instead of playing knight g7 black played knight e5 and knight f3 by Keller. he wants to remove the defender knight g7 but already it's too late here comes knight takes e5 and you can't even recapture because once the queen is penetrating the 7th rank the game will end up quickly if here then the rook is coming and it's over that's why in our game after knight takes e5 black made its vision took played rook f8 and knight f7 so you are free to win this bishop but black captured it with the wrong piece instead it was better to play g takes h5 in this case still black can prolong his resistance although white has a dangerous attack but in our game after knight f7 we have knight takes h5 which allows white to bring into life a brilliant combination by making this move black overlooked white's next move and as we have reached the critical position please pause the video and try to find geller's next move ready in here yefim geller played knight d5 just a brilliant move guys the idea is that now after e takes d5 black can no longer meet bishop d4 with e6 e5 and yeah you should accept the peace sacrifice otherwise the bishop on e7 will also drop so if he takes d5 in the game and knight h6 check king g7 and another marvelous move by geller can you find his next move ready uh, well if not uh, king g7 and king h8 then bishop d4 can follow but in this case when you are playing king g7 of course bishop d4 is also winning but the move which simply blows apart black's position is queen f7 guys this is what happens when the grandmaster is in the angry mood a queen sacrifice guys a queen sacrifice which is demolishing black's position what a brutal queen sacrifice right king h8 but a more brutal sacrifice is coming you know so watch up to the end please king h8 was met with bishop d4 check as you remembered for making this move possible we sacrificed the knight bishop f6 and the final blow which forced the resignation is can you find white's next move that move is rook takes f6 beauty the beauty is lying all over this combination black resigned in view of the following line if knight takes f6 then bishop takes f6 checkmate can follow this is simple with two minor pieces white is killing the enemy king but let's take a look what if knight g7 this is actually the only move which is prolonging black's resistance but white can quickly win the game without much effort again with rook f7 white is creating a mating threat if rook g8 then after bishop takes g7 rook takes g7 white can announce a check from f8 and then can announce a checkmate that's why after rook f7 
all black can do is to play queen c5 in order to avoid checkmate but once you are losing your queen the game will end up very quickly white has an extra rook and a totally winning position that's why after this heavy blow after rook takes f6 finally resignation followed a very very impressive game by Yefim Geller, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video, take care.